31, welcome to chapter 9. This is the second to last chapter. We, we typically go a little out of order, um, but we're going to take a look at sequences and their notation in this lecture, and I'm going to show you how to write the terms of a sequence defined by an explicit formula, and we'll also write the terms of a sequence defined by a recursive formula, and I'll show you factorial notation. So these will both have formulas, but when we say recursive, we'll define this formula in terms of the term that came before it. And I know that doesn't totally make a lot of sense now, but when we go to make these sequences, we're just going to make a list of numbers and we're going to look for patterns. So you're going to see a list of numbers and I can just make one up like 1, 4, 7, 10, 13, and maybe you see the pattern there. But this is a sequence. This is a list of numbers separated by commas. And I haven't defined this sequence explicitly or recursively. I haven't given you a formula. All I've done is just lay out the numbers in front of you. And I want to just give you some notation. We'll talk about it officially down here in just a moment. But I would say in here that a sub 1 was equal to 1, a sub 2 was equal to 4, a sub 3 was equal to 7, a sub 4 was equal to 10, and I ran out of room, but maybe you can guess that I would say a sub 5 was equal to 13. So you're going to start seeing the, this notation, and the subscript here refers to the, the position in the list. So this was the first number in the list, this was the second number in the list, third number, fourth number. So the subscript refers to which position in the list this particular number is, but a sub 1 is 1, a sub 2, 4. All right, so we'll get used to that notation. So, so let me just start going into this, right? A sequence is a function that computes an ordered list. So for example, we might have a sub n defined by the function 100 times n, and you can see this list here, but let's think about it. If I found a sub 1, that would be the function evaluated at 1, which would be 100 times 1, or 100. If I found a sub 2, n is 2, so if I do f of 2, 100 times 2 is 200. a sub 3 would be 100 times 3, 300. And then I think you can see a sub 4 would be 100 times 4, 400. So in this case, a sub 1 was 100, a sub 2 was 200, a sub 3 was 300 and a sub 4 was 400. And, and you can guess the next term in the list. a sub 5 would be 500, then 600. And that's all a sequence is. It's a list of numbers. All right? and, and eventually in this chapter, we'll get to something called series, not sequences, but series. And that's when we start adding the numbers in the list. So we'll do 100 plus 200 plus 300. But right now we're just generating the lists. That's always step one when you start looking at sequences and series. The first thing you got to do is just generate your list, and then we'll start adding those terms. So the general term, or sometimes referred to the nth term, more commonly the nth term, of the sequence is a sub n. And that's, again, that subscript is telling you the position in your ordered list. Which This term is which position, which ordered position in your list. A finite sequence is a function that has the, a set of natural numbers in the form 1, 2, 3, comma, to n as its domain, and an infinite sequence means we just keep going on forever. All right, so if you ever see this dot, 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 that means that it can go on forever. And I, I put that here, dot, dot, dot. I wasn't capping it. I didn't say just go from a sub 1 to a sub 10. This said go on forever. All right, so let's practice a couple of these um, these sequences, and we're going to define them initially with explicit formulas. All right, and then I will get into how you define a recursive formula. Again, I would define a sub 4 in terms of a sub 3. We recurse, we regress back. I would, in term, it, I would define a sub 3 in terms of a sub 2. I would define a sub 2 in terms of a sub 1. So that's a whole different set of shenanigans that we'll get to a little bit later in this section. All right, so let me go ahead and scooch this up. And let's see if we can start to generate some lists here. All right, so I should say generate an ordered list. So we want to write the first five terms of a sequence defined by the explicit formula. So this is my explicit formula. It's just, it's got some, it's got some multiplication, some subtraction. This is basically, if we were going to graph it like a line, this would be 5x minus 2. This is a linear um, expression. But let's take a look at it through the lens of these sequences. 
So a sub 1, well that would be 5 times 1 minus 2, and you know that would be the number 3. Right, I'll put this over here so I don't run out of room. So a sub 1 is 3. Okay, I'm just going to start writing these numbers up here so you can see this list get generated. If I go to calculate a sub 2, that would be 5 times 2 minus 2. Well, 10 minus 2 is 8, so the second term in my sequence is 8. And the directions here say, find, oh, excuse me, write the first five terms, so I'm going to keep on going. a sub 3 would be 5 times 3 minus 2. So 5 times 3 is 13. 13 minus, oh, sorry, 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus 2 is 13. All right. And maybe you can see the pattern at this point. If you can, great. If you can say, like, I already know what's coming next, I don't need to calculate it, that's fine. But if you can't see it, no harm. We just plug 4 into our explicit formula. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus 2 is 18. All right. And then if we want a sub 5, wait, let me scooch this up. I think I just put that out of sight for you. There we go. A sub 5, that would be 5 times 5 minus 2. So 25 minus 2 is 23. All right, and there's the beginnings of the terms of my sequence. Now this can keep on going. All right, I could plug in 6, 7, 8. I could plug in whatever I want. But this is an explicit formula. All right, we've got an equation to plug into. And maybe you start to see the pattern. My, my, the terms of my sequence jumped 5 units every time. Right? 3 plus 5 is 8. 8 plus 5 is 13. 13 plus 18 is 23. And, and the reason for that is we had a 5n. Right? That's linear growth. Right? For every one unit increase in n, a sub n is increasing by 5 units. That was the slope. All right, let's take a look at this sequence. This is a little funky, so let's try this. a sub 1 would be negative 1 to the 1 plus 1 times 1 squared. So let's PEMDAS this thing. All right, so I'm going to look at this grouped symbol first. So 1 plus 1 in the exponent here is 2. Negative 1 squared is 1. All right, and then 1 squared is 1, so 1 times 1 is just 1. All right, so there's the first term in my sequence. Let's try a sub 2. This would be negative 1 to the 2 plus 1 times 2 squared. All right. So I think the 2 squared is probably the easier one to look at. I think we can all agree 2 squared is 4. But let's take a look at this term. All right, 2 plus 1 is 3. Negative 1 to the third power. Well, if you had negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1, that would be negative 1. So negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So a sub 2 is negative 4. And again, a sub 2 just means the second number in my sequence. Well, that's negative 4. All right, a sub 3 would be negative 1 to the 3 plus 1 times 3 squared. All right, so again, I, I think you'll give me that 3 squared is 9, but let's figure out what's happening with this, this power on negative 1. So 3 plus 1 is 4. Negative 1 to the 4th, well, any negative number raised to an even power or even exponent, well, that's going to be positive 1. So 1 times 9 is 9. And then let's go get a sub 4 negative 1 to the 4 plus 1 times 4 squared, and maybe you're starting to see the pattern. And if you are, great, and if you aren't, that's fine. You can always plug in. That will always work. All right, so 4 squared is 16. 4 plus 1 is 5. Negative 1 raised to the fifth power is negative 1. Negative 1 times 16 is negative 16. And last but not least, we have a sub 5 is negative 1 to the 5 plus 1 times 5 squared. And I want us, before I crunch this, start to look at the patterns here. Ooh, I didn't write negative 16. All right, first term was positive 1, second term was negative 4, positive 9, negative 16. Maybe you're starting to see that the terms are alternating in signs, right? We went from positive to negative to positive to negative. So should this term here that I'm about to write, do we think it should be positive or negative? Well, if we're alternating like this, it should be positive. I also noticed that the numbers are perfect squares. This was 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, 4 squared. So 5 squared is going to be 25, and that's the pattern. If you want to even project, what do you think the next term would be? All right, if I went one more here, what would a sub 6 be? Well, it would be negative 36. 
because I'd alternate between positive and negative, and then I have to take my next squared term, which is 6 squared, and that's equal to 36. All right, so I just want to point out here, I'll put a little, oops, do we have room to, to write it? So let me go ahead and, well, I'll scooch this up in a moment, and then, well, no, I'll scooch it up now, and now we'll write it. All right. So I just want to make sure we have some vocab down. All right, so right here, this, this thing here, this is called an alternating sequence. All right, as the numbers in this sequence alternate between being positive and negative, right? The numbers in the sequence or the terms in the sequence alternate between being positive and negative. Right. And the most common alternators, the term that's making that jump between positive and negative is negative 1 to the n plus 1. Sometimes we see just negative 1 to the n. These are alternators. I wish they were as cool as the terminator. I don't know how old, joke, how old that joke's going to be when you hear this, um, but they're not as cool, but they're alternators. When you see terms like this, in part of your sequence, like I could see it right here, I knew that this was gonna switch between positive and negative. And as soon as I figure out whether or not the first term's positive or negative, and in this case it was positive, then I knew I was gonna go positive, negative, positive, negative, so on and so forth. But if, if our alternator had been negative one to the n, then I would have started with negative here and then positive. So it just depends on your alternator. All right, let's try the rational function. All right, let's see if we can get this one. So a sub one here. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5. All right, and then we've got 1 squared plus 3 on the bottom, so let me write this out. This would be 3 times 1 plus 2 over 1 squared plus 3. So we're looking at 5 over 4. All right, there's my first term, so let me write 5 fourths. All right, let's see if we can get a sub 2. a sub 2 would be 3 times 2 plus 2 over 2 squared plus 3. All right. 3 times 2 is 6, 6 plus 2 is 8, 2 squared is 4, 4 plus 3 is 7, so my second term is 8 sevenths. Take note that I'm not alternating here. I didn't have an alternator in my sequence. That's great. All right, let's try a sub 3. This would be 3 times 3 plus 2 over 3 squared plus 3, so 9 plus 2 is 11. 3 squared is 9 plus 3. I think we've got 11 twelfths. All right, I'm going to kind of squish this over here so I think we can still see it. All right, so let's try a sub. I'll put it kind of in the center of these two. So a sub 4 would be equal to 3 times 4 plus 2 over 4 squared plus 3. All right. 3 times 4 is 12, 12 plus 2 is 14, um, 4 squared is 16, 16 plus 3 is 19. So I am looking at 14 nineteenths. So again, first term in my sequence, a sub 1 is 5 fourths, second term, 8 sevenths, 11 twelfths, 14 nineteenths. I've got one more to go because I was asked to get 5 terms, so a sub 5 would be 3 times 5 plus 2 over 5 squared plus 3. So I think we're looking at 17 over 28. And you can see this sequence would be a little harder to guess the pattern for it. Like I, I think I'm pretty solid on I could have seen the pattern here. And I could have even seen the pattern here, right? Here I can see the terms are increasing by 5. Here I can see the perfect squares, right? 1, 4, 9, 16, 25. And I can also notice the alternator. But this would be a little harder to pick apart, right? 5, 8, 11, 14, 17. Well, at least the numerators are increasing by 3. But the pattern on the denominator, it would be hard to unpack. 4, 7, 12, 19, 28. That one would be a little bit harder. Oops, it moved my paper. That would be a little harder to, to go backwards on, meaning if, you, if I gave you these terms 
just these five numbers, it'd be a little bit harder for me to get this explicit formula. All right, before we get out of here, I wanna show you how you can have your calculator calculate all of these numbers for you. It's pretty awesome, so I'm gonna flip over to my computer and show you that. I'll see you in a bit, bye. Hey Math 31, I wanna take a moment and show you one way of getting sequences on your calculator. There are a couple of them. This is just one version of it. So if you want to get a, a sequence on your calculator, and we can do it for the sequence we found in part A, the a sub n being 5n minus 2, you can also do it for any of these. But let me show you where you go on your calculator. It's, it's kind of hidden, it's not at all obvious. So you actually go second in stat in this case, and you go into your ops menu. And if you look at option five in that drop down menu, you see it says the word sequence. And here's what your calculator needs from you. The first thing it needs is the actual explicit formula. Now that says 5n minus 2. I'm just going to do 5x minus 2. Um, when we get to the next example, I will show you how to go into sequence mode, and then all of your buttons will be saying n. Um, but once you type in your sequence, hit comma, and then you need to actually tell your calculator that the variable is x. All right, it's just how Texas Instruments set this up. So, okay. Now you wanted the first five terms, so we started with a sub one, and then we ended with a sub five. So we're gonna go, oops, that's not what I wanted. Let me delete that. We're gonna go from one to five. So your calculator needs the explicit formula. Then it needs you to tell your cal you need to tell your calculator, yes, my variable is x, and then low to high. Now when I hit enter. You see that output, and it looks awesome, right? 3, 8, 13, 18, 23. And for this more convoluted formula, right, if I clear this out, let me start this over just so you can see it. If I hit second, stat, go to the right, option five. Now I want to protect both my numerator and denominator with parentheses because they are binomials. So I do 3x plus 2 divided by x squared plus 3 both the numerator and denominator in parentheses, comma x, comma 1, comma 5, right? And then when I hit enter, I, I see these fractions. Now, 1.25, maybe you can recognize that as 5 fourths. Um, if you want to see the other ones, you can scroll left and right to see them. Your calculator can float a lot of decimals, so that can be a bit cumbersome. I mean, look at that's 11 twelfths. Um, personally, what I would do here, I don't like looking at it horizontally. It's hard for my brain to wrap around that. So I would take that same calculator command, and what I would do is I would store that information into L1. If I store it into L1 and hit enter, I get the same output screen there. But now when I go into L1, I can actually see those five numbers, or at least those five fractions, and I can start matching up, like, is 5 fourths equal to 1.25? Okay, let me try this thing. Like, I see 0. 0.607 here. Is that 17 28 So I'll go back to my home screen. Let's see. 17 divided by 28. Sure enough, that is the fraction 0. 0.607, so I can see that my fraction were is matching the decimal answers in L1, and that's just a little bit, um, it's a nice little check to have. All right, so with that, we're gonna practice writing more explicit, or writing more terms from an explicit formula, and then I'm gonna show you yet another way to find sequences on your calculator. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.